And so the Rebbe is saying, when Mashiach comes, and it should be any instant now, I mean, listen, the, the Mashiach is already here. The, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, he is the Mashiach. But the Geula, the redemption, the, the, his goal is to <clears throat> defeat all of our enemies and the enemies of Judaism and to build a temple. God will send the temple down and to gather all the Jews. That's the goal. That certainly has not happened yet. So Mashiach is here. That's the Rebbe. And every generation has the Mashiach. But the redemption is not here. It certainly is not here, says the Rebbe. It, a lot of this depends on us, says the Rebbe. In fact, it's much, much more present, the redemption, than we think. But we just have to open up our eyes and see it. So the Rebbe is saying like this, that, and therefore, one of the big things of Mashiach is there's not going to be any policemen. You won't need any police. Maybe that's what this insane idea of defund the police, maybe it popped into their mind, could be. I'm, and I mean, you know, to jump the gun, so to speak, on, uh, or to do away with a gun totally, uh, the, 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 what's going on in the world now. But the fact is that eventually it will be that people will know what is right and they'll be interested. <clears throat> they'll care about what's right. They'll care, they care about what's right and they'll care, they will care about what, what is wrong and is what God wants or more exactly what it says in the Torah. People will be interested in what it says in the Torah. And that's the only good and bad, the definition of good and bad there is in the world. Real good definition. What the, the, People have conscience. You can have, you can be an atheist. You'll be a nice person, a good person, not a murderer, because you're conscious. But to make it, to, you know, one person's conscience says, you know, you shouldn't kill. Another person's same conscience, right? We saw the Germans just, a, you know, 70, 80 years ago, says you shouldn't kill anyone that agrees with the Nazis. That's you can't kill. But anyone who disagrees, of course, you can kill. That, that's a danger to the world. And Stalin said, you, that you're first, of course, you're not supposed to kill. But you're not supposed to kill anyone who agrees with communism. But anyone who doesn't is destroying the world. So yeah, of course, yeah, that's, that's not really a person. But you have to kill. Them. So you can you can twist everything around if, without the Torah. Without the Torah, it's possible to twist around conscious. You can twist around the Torah also. But it's much more difficult. It's much more difficult because the laws are there clearly and the rabbis say clearly. You can bribe the rabbis also, right? You can also bribe the rabbis. But it just becomes more and more difficult. It becomes more obvious that you're going against, you're twisting things around, <clears throat> twisting things around. Okay, like I say, it's not 100%. Yeruvim ben Nevat, somehow or other in the first temple, convinced everybody, 10 tribes, to worship the golden calf. All the Jewish people heard from God, don't worship idols, and they all did it 40 days later. So it's possible for a human being to twist everything around that he wants, right? Adam, first man, he heard just a couple hours earlier, directly from God, don't eat from the tree, and he ate from the tree. So it's possible for people to make mistakes, yes. <clears throat> but at least we know what a mistake is. <clears throat> eventually, you discover that it's a wrong thing, right? That you did a wrong thing. The Jews in the golden calf, eventually they realized that it was wrong. Okay, so it says that's the idea of shoftim. That's the idea of judges. The judges will tell everybody what is right. He says, therefore, that you have to have judges, but you have to have advisors. Why? What's the thing of advisors? Advisors, in order, in order to bring those people who are interested in, in getting advice to understand and to feel the godliness, the goodness of the Torah and the commandments and in Judaism. It was, in other words, not just to do it because it's right and I'm wrong. To do it because it's right and I want to be right also. I enjoy doing what's right. <clears throat> I want to do more things that are right, correct. And that's what the advisors come to do. Because God created the world that everything is different and everybody's personality is different. It says all the snowflakes are different. I never checked it out, but it says that all the snowflakes are different. So obviously all of the atoms and quarks are different for no other reason that they're all in different places, right? They, 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 they hit one another, so they must be different somewhere. <clears throat> I don't know if there's a different, if they're as different as snowflakes are, but for sure, human personality is different. Every person is different. So if you want to put the Torah <clears throat> inside of everyone, so it, it's much easier not to put it inside. You just make a decree, and everybody has to follow it. You know, be like Stalin, be like the, 
Everybody follows it. That's all what you do. But Judaism, and especially Mashiach, is interested in how you do it. It has to come from you, that you realize that I am doing what I'm being created to do. It's the, in the fiber of my very existence to do what God wants. But in order to feel that, you have to choose. And that's what the Yoetz, the advisor, will do. He'll make us choose and choose constantly to see our true identity and our true reality and our true happiness comes from doing what God wants. But therefore, you have to have an advisor. <clears throat> in a way that this will be a beginning. It'll, Like we said, it'll be a start. It'll actually bring us to deed. Not just to tell us what to do. It says like uh, in general, what to do. But to actually begin to do good. And a gate, like we said. <clears throat> the gates of our connection to the world. And it won't remain like a, a new thing that's, that's not of my level. I have to do it. I don't ask questions. Listen, in a way, that's good. Because if you want to understand everything, then when you don't understand things, you just won't do them. So sometimes you have to just do things because they're not understandable. But the ideal is not that way. The idea is that, okay, maybe it could be I don't understand why God wants me to put on the film, but I do understand that God is creating me, and I do understand that God is infinitely good. And I do understand that by commandment, I'm connected to this infinite good, but it has to be convinced. Everybody has to be convinced according to their own personality. She says, this has to become by means of the work of a Jew, even before the Geula. This is, we have to have, this is a service to, I say, to prepare the vessel. Step after step and level after level in order to prepare them to do, to be a vessel which is ready to receive all of the revelations of the days of the Mashiach. So was, in other words, Mashiach is going to make a world that's very different from our world. Very different from our world. And it's a world that we can talk about. And we can even lecture about it. We can tell other people to do. But when it comes to ourselves, right, when that depression hits or anger hits or lust hits for something, right, you really want that thing and you needed it. So then what do you do? What do you do? Well, if someone comes and asks you for advice, listen, I get angry. I get, you can give them wonderful advice. But when it happens to you, then all the advice in the world in your mind, it doesn't help. Right? It doesn't help because it wasn't really true advice. It's advice that you gave to others in a friendly way. But now your biggest friend becomes your depression, your anger. That's the real you. That's what you feel. And in order to be convinced that it's not the real you, that there's a real you that's more real, and the real you is not being addicted and being the, the, what it was, the aggressive and things like that, that's not the real me, that you have to have an advisor. And that advisor, that's before the Geula comes. You have to have an advisor in order to receive the days of the Mashiach. Listen, most people, Maimonides says, and he's the big expert on this, that everyone has to believe, every Jew has to believe in Mashiach and await his arrival. And anyone who does not do that is denying the whole Torah. That's what the Rambam says. And, but we see that there's a lot of Jews and a lot of very good Jews and a lot of Jews that are believe, Jews that believe in God and they want to do everything that says in the Torah and they're not waiting for Mashiach and they don't even know what it is and they don't care. Makes no difference to them. You know, why is this? Says the Rebbe, the reason is, is because they haven't, <clears throat> uh, how do you say, refined their personality to the point where they're really willing to accept that they aren't the boss. This is a very deep thing. It says that the Baal Shem Tov, before he died, the last sentence he said was, regal gaiva. Please don't make me into an egotist. In other words, to feel, ah, I did it. I, I, this is a natural, deep, 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 deep feeling. The essence of personality. The essence of personality. To, in order to say that, no, that's not the essence of my personality. The essence of my personality is to do what God wants, even if it's against what I, in my inner kishkis, want to do, to go totally against my nature. That's why the Mashiach is, is a king. 
Okay, so one hand, it means to be a king is that he decrees. But when you're decreed, so you don't really change yourself. You change your actions, your speech. In order to change yourself, it's not enough just a king. You have to have an advisor. You have to have an advisor. And the advisor that gives you things which are in tune with your personality that wake you up. And that's going to be a vessel for the coming of the Mashiach. <clears throat> So therefore, you have a bad temper. You, you have, then it means you have no idea what Mashiach is. You won't be able to understand. You have lust after things, money, etc., other things. You're not a vessel for Mashiach. You can talk about it, but you're not gonna. You won't accept the novelty of the Mashiach that it's God's world, it's not my world. You want to, You can't. I can't. It says the Rebbe. Therefore, you have to work on yourself. In order to work on yourself, you have to have an advisor, a yoetz. That the service of every Jew before the redemption comes has to be something like what it's going to be when Mashiach comes. Similarly, to make a, an inner vessel for this blessing that's going to be. And we can understand that in our case, that in order to reach and receive Hamatzav, the situation of Ashiva Shoftaich, Kabrishona, to return the judges like they were in the beginning and the advisors that will actually start things off, Kabatchila, Biamota Mashiach. So we a Jew has to do this on himself now. Shayadu the Torah of Mitzvah, that Judaism and Torah of Mitzvah should be by him in two ways. In a way of Shoftaiach, that you decree on yourself to do bad, to, to do I'm sorry, to do good and to turn from bad. You decree on yourself, you force yourself to do good and to turn from bad, like a judge. Kabbalat ol means accepting the yoke and doing what it says in the Torah unquestioningly. And also in a way of Yotzayach, to start to enjoy everything that you do. Enjoy refraining from bad. Enjoy, right? Enjoy refraining from bad. Like a person, let's say he's given the, the, a cat, a, a, a rotten cat. Here, eat this. You're hungry. Ah, I don't want it. Or someone comes and says, well, it's a good thing you didn't eat that thing. It's poison. You didn't know it. It's poison. Oh, you're so happy. Right? That, that's what it means. Turning from bad, you enjoy turning away from bad. It, the bad disgusts you. That's what it means. A yoetz. That's like an advisor. You make an advisor. It goes into your insides. And you actually enjoy doing good. You enjoy putting out the fill on people. You enjoy putting out the fill on yourself. Shorot, the Torah, the teaching of the Torah will be accepted by him in an inside way, like a good advice. A good advice. <clears throat> it's something, I mean, maybe an, an example of just making this up now. Smoking. Smoking used to be very, very popular. When I was young, everybody smoked. If you didn't smoke, there was something wrong with you. You had to have some sort of a reason. The doctor told me, or, you know, I don't enjoy the smoke. But every normal person smoked. And almost the more you smoked, the more you had a cigarette, was a sign that you were more, you know, alive and, you know, modern. And all of a sudden they came along and they said, no, no, don't smoke anymore. It was very difficult for people. Very difficult. Don't smoke. And finally, it got to the point where people enjoyed not smoking. Every moment I don't smoke, it adds health to me. Every moment I don't smoke, I make a cleaner environment. Every right? So enjoyed not smoking. That's, that's negative things. But people actually enjoyed it. You want to smoke? Smoke. What do you smoke for? What do you want to smoke? Please, you want to smoke? Leave the room. It used to be, <laughs> I remember, it used to be every room. You you never would dare to say to a person, like in a restaurant, please don't smoke. You don't like smoking? Then go outside. Like the people who didn't smoke, they had to go outside. Right? You, you, smoking bothers you? I'll tell the manager, what, are you are you okay, my friend? They had non-smoking areas in in in, in uh, airplanes. That's because a normal person smoked, right? You had like 55 rows or whatever it is was for smokers. And there was five rows, whatever, for people who didn't smoke. Right? smoke. And then they realized it was a bad thing. And then people enjoyed not smoking. And they, the smoking disgusted them. You want to smoke, go outside. It's the same thing with being an egotist. And an egotist is this thing that everybody enjoys. But being an egotist is a bad thing, right? Like, like smoking used to be. It's a bad thing when people start to realize that they'll enjoy not being egotistical. They'll enjoy not doing what they want, doing what God wants. 
People will enjoy it. You want to be an egotist? Go outside. That's what I mean. Shoftim v'shot 2010. That's what I mean. Shoftim are judges. They tell you what's right. They tell you what's wrong. A show, that a, 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 a yoitz, it explains to you that you understand why this thing is really good. Maybe it's not good. Huh? You ask a lot of questions, why, and then you become convinced. Yes, I see it is good. That's what it says in the Torah, that you have to put shoftim and judges and policemen. You know, this is a commandment, a very, very essential commandment in all places, also outside of the land of Israel, in all the times, even nowadays, to make judges and policemen, like it says in our Torah portion. <clears throat> and you have to, I'm sorry, that if you have any problems, you should go to a judge that's in there, that, and you should, and he will search, and he will in, 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 inquire, and he will tell you what the law is. And you have to do what the, what the judge says. That's what it says in this week's Torah. It tells us that the, 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 the judge, which is in that generation, there'll be one main judge, like Samuel in his generation, like Moses in his generation. The wholeness of this thing will be when there's added the nani mimeno eights of a tashia. In addition to the judge will be <clears throat> when there'll also be an advisor. In the days of the, the, the Moses is talking about when the Jews were in the desert, etc., when they came into the land of Israel in the beginning, <clears throat> it says that then the Jewish people, all they needed really was a judge to tell them what to do. And anyone who didn't want to, didn't want to, they brought, they didn't explain to Moses. They brought a, a policeman to knock some sense into him. But nowadays, there's another another thing, and another advantage is an advisor. <clears throat> you have to addition in addition to the judge or the rabbi who says what the law is. There should be also an advisor, like we say, asay lecharav. And here the Rebbe is saying, and this became a, a very big thing in Chabad, that everyone has to make an advisor for themselves. Asay lecharav, hanotein lo etzab yirat shemayim b'avodat Hashem. You have to pick somebody. It doesn't make any difference. Someone who think you think could give you good advice. And when you pick that person, then that person, when you ask him a question, he'll have help from, from God. He'll have help from above. And he'll give proper advice. I've seen amazing cases where people who are really very simple people. Someone came up and said, I want you to be my rav. Me, who am I? And when they ask them questions, they listen, I, I know what to do, but I'll tell you what I think. You know, if the Rebbe said you have to pick somebody to be a rub and I'm the rub, so it means you're doing what the Rebbe said. So I'll tell you what my advice is. My advice, and usually the advice is, is exactly on. Quite amazing. And by means of listening, by means of tziyut, by, by observing what the judges say, the rabbi, and he gives the law and what the Torah says, and the advisor that he brings this law into an inner way, that you actually enjoy doing what the judge says, that you'll be able to receive, then that will prepare us for Mashiach. Like it says, oh. by doing what the rabbis say now, that enables us to receive what's going to be when Mashiach comes, <clears throat> that there'll be a real true judge Mashiach in the beginning, and they'll also that the Mashiach will also give advice to actually make you begin to do, to start things which are incomparable, which you thought were outside of your ability. Oh, and now we're going to talk about a prophet. This week's Torah portion talks about a prophet, and the Rebbe is going to come out with some bombshell statements over here. Listen to this. Also, the difference between the words of the Torah and the words of prophecy. Now, in fact, the whole world, the whole Torah is really the prophecy of <clears throat> Moses. The, the Jewish people only heard directly from God the first two of the Ten Commandments. And the rest was given by prophecy by Moses. But everybody knew that what Moses was saying was what God is saying. <clears throat> so it says there's the words of the Torah and there's the words of prophecy. That, that's what's spoken about in Shoftim, in this week's Torah portion. Torah, this is above from the world. Torah is the wisdom and the will of God. That this is totally above from any connection to the world. Just like there's no thought which can possibly grasp God at all, 
even though that the Torah came down into the physical world, in a ways that we can understand it, there's whole yeshivas, right? Yeshivas. The religious people spend millions, billions of dollars on yeshivas, making places where boys can sit and learn Torah the whole entire day and feeding them and giving them a place to, 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 to sleep and the shelter and paying for teachers. The teachers have families. Tremendous amounts of money are spent to ensure that Jews will learn the Torah. In other words, the Torah is something that you can learn, that you can understand. You can learn the Torah and it'll be understood until the Torah will be called on your name. But nevertheless, the essence of the Torah is pure godliness. The essence of the Torah is totally above understanding. I mean, just the idea that God gave us a book doesn't make any sense. He says, that's right. That's the Torah. It doesn't make any sense. You can sit and learn it. You can understand it. That also doesn't make any sense. How can God's wisdom be understandable? He says, that's the attitude you're supposed to take when you receive the Torah. But the fact is, the Torah really comes from above understanding. That's like the shofet. That's like the judge. Therefore, the, what the judge does, with how the Torah works, is mainly in a way of a commandment from above, which is not the case of prophet. The prophets, even though the prophets were also the word of God, but nevertheless, the revelation of the God to the prophets in prophecy, God revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Begidrum Hain, they are, <clears throat> even though that there are certain conditions that for a prophet, not everybody could be a prophet. What was a prophet? A prophet was a person who purified himself totally, made himself an empty vessel. And then, because of this, he could receive the Torah. He could receive prophecy, he could receive messages from God. But, you know, any, there were also false prophets. The, the idea of the prophet, though, is a true prophet, that the words of God are not just decreed from above, that the word of God should be neglected, it should be absorbed in this person's mind and intellect of the prophet in a way that it becomes totally unified with him. Like the Rambam says, it's one of the 13 principles of faith that God gives prophecy to prophets and, that, and also in thought and in speech. So there's criteria for who can be a prophet. It doesn't just mean that anyone who wants to, who says he can be a prophet. Like I said before, there's such a thing as false prophets. The, the spirit of God speaks inside of them, and God's word is on his tongue, on the tongue, uh, on my tongue. Of the, of, like it says, one second, where is this? It's in the prophet, it's in Samuel, the book of Samuel. So Samuel was a prophet, and the word of God was on Samuel's lips. <clears throat> so if so, the, the idea of prophecy is that it comes in a revealed way <clears throat> in speech. Not like the Torah, that the Torah, when God spoke directly, it was too much. Too much. The whole idea of prophecy of a person, that a person announces and, and uh, announces and tells the people these prophecies, this is Niv Sivatayim. This comes from the word of Niv, the flowing of his lips. Lokator, not like the Torah, that the Torah can remain in thought. <clears throat> yeah, a person can learn Torah and the Torah can be in his mind. The idea of the prophecy, it has to come out. Also, but Tochen, a Nevua, has, to, has a connection to the world. Ein Navi Omed Ella. One of the big purposes of the prophets is to tell us future events, to prophesize, prophesize what's going to be. The fact is, is that the prophets prophesize what's going to be, but a lot of the prophecies of the prophets were in order to make the people return to God. And it was telling the people that if you continue to do this, I'm going to give you a very severe prophecy, right? It's going to be not good. The temple is going to be destroyed. You're going to be scattered all over the place, right? 
basically repeating the same prophecy that Moses said. We'll see in a, in a week, two weeks, or three weeks. The prophecies of Moses. And that the Jews, if you don't do what I want, you're going to be scattered all around, but God will gather you all together and he'll, <clears throat> and he still always loves you, etc. But the prophet is there to tell you what's going to be in the world. And the Yesh Lomar, we can say at first glance that the Torah and prophecy in general, they are the difference between the judges and the advisors. That a judge is like the Torah. His thing is to tell what the laws of the Torah are. That this comes in a way of a commandment. But a, an advisor, a yoitz, he gives an advisor. He gives advice. They're put in a way of advice. Uh, in a way to explain to you. And your understanding. Like prophecy. Prophecy is, this is, because you're with the kleos, you know, it says like a person's, what is this, his, his uh, uh, kidneys. It says advise him, like a person's conscience. That's netzach bahod. That a prophet is not, the, the prophet, but is not a, a prophet is not a judge. He doesn't necessarily tell you what the law is. He's giving you advice regarding to, to conduct yourself in this world. Things that are going to be in the world. Kagon, for instance, go to such and such a place or do such and such a thing. <clears throat> the, or, or Alto, don't go in such and such a place or make war with this people or don't make war with the people. Or Kashem, just like Shayeshtam, that there is. We're going to have to stop, I think. We'll see what we can do. Or Kashem, and just like that there is a commandment to listen to your judges all the time. It says there will come a judge in your days. Also is regarding to the prophets themselves. Like it says afterwards, Just like it is a commandment in all generations, it doesn't say that there's any time limit, that we must listen to prophets. Also, in every generation, there always will be prophets. Like it says in the Torah, I will make a prophet in, to you, and you must listen to this prophet. Like the Maimonides says in his book, Sefer Mada, that one of the foundations of Judaism is to know that God gives prophecy <coughs> to people. <coughs> and it's also another commandment, to listen to the prophet. Like it says over there, all these de de details of how it's a commandment to listen to whatever a prophet says. Since the Maimonides brings this law in his book, his law book, <clears throat> in a great length, and with a introduction that this is one of the foundations of Judaism, Yesodia died. So says the Rebbe, it's, it must, it's understood, it's obvious, that this is a law that there are prophets and we must listen to them in every generation. <clears throat> I, the rabbis say that since the prophets, the last prophets died, that was in the beginning of the second temple, Chagai, Zechariah, and Malachi, it says there is removed the spirit of holiness from the Jews, Ruach HaKodesh, a, a spirit of, I did say, holy inspiration is removed from the Jews. So there's no prophets. This is already like 2,500 years there haven't been any prophets. That's what, the, that's what the Talmud says. Uh, there's no prophets. How can we say that there's prophets now? It says we've spoken a lot of times, but Firush, but Zed, to explain this, that it doesn't mean that prophecy has gone away. It doesn't say that prophecy has stopped. It just says nistalka. It just says that it departed. Ela nistalka. What do you mean? It departed, but it can come back. Lobatla doesn't say that it has ceased or <clears throat> it, it, <clears throat> it's gone away. It, I'm sorry. It doesn't say that Pascha, that it has ceased or that it has stopped. It just says Istalka. Istalka means that it, it's temporarily temporarily removed. Karamuchach, like it says, that even afterwards we find that there is Ruach HaKodesh, there is Holy Spirit and Spirit of Prophecy um, among many people, even the later generations. Even in, the, in, in uh, which is also explained in uh, the, the, the Rambam himself, that we see that there's Tanayim, that they had prophecy, is the Rambam doesn't bring any Tanayim in regating to, and, and sorry, it doesn't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. This word, <laughs> among all the conditions that the Rambam brings of being a prophet, Maimonides, he does not say that in order to be a prophet, it has to be when there's a holy temple. It has to be before Zechariah and, and Haggai. doesn't say that. The Rambam doesn't bring any of these conditions of our time limits. And when the first, it doesn't say that since the last prophets died, there's no more prophecy. No, the Rambam, Rambam says that there is even more. That it's it's one of the foundations of Judaism right now. And even more, the Rambam writes in his letters of Tateman, Tateman, that in the times the and that that I'm oh, sorry, that in a certain year, that's what the Rambam writes, according to what he can he calculates this year, he says prophecy will return to the Jewish people. And he says there's no doubt that prophecy will return to the Jewish people before the Mashiach arrives. Like it says, Venavu Benechem Ubenechem, like it says, your children and your children's children will prophesy. It's a prophecy in Joel. Joel. <clears throat> the Yeshlomer, we can say that explaining this is according to what we said before in the whole topic of your advisors in the beginning. That in order that, that you should receive the revelations of the days of the Mashiach, so there has to be a beginning, a start. A start in serving the Mashiach right now. And therefore, there are now advisors now. Prophecy. Prophets are like advisors. And they draw down advice that can be accepted by people in a way that's relevant, that it's a beginning, not just an origin, the idea of Mashiach, but we can actually begin accepting the Mashiach. We can actually begin working for Mashiach to making the vessels. And this is possible, by means of this, it will <clears throat> enable you, the Kabul Ba'ofen Penimi, in an inner way, the godliness that's going to be revealed in the days of the Mashiach, whether in a way of a judge from above to below, or in a way of an advisor from below to above. Lochen, therefore, whoa, it's a law in our generation, even now, that it's one of the foundations of Judaism, the 13 foundations of Judaism, to know that God gives prophecy to people. That always, in all the generations, it's relevant that there should be prophecy in this world until the level of prophecy, which is like the prophecy of Moses. That's what it says in the Torah. I will give a prophet, God says, Navi, this week's Torah portion, I will, it, says, it says, don't go to the soothsayers or the, the, the necromancers or whatever, the astrologers or whatever. The palm readers says, I will, the sorcerer, I will give, give you, God says, I will give you a prophet like Kamocha, like you, Moses. Shlemos in the total pure prophecy, like the Rambam says. According to this, so we can say that the reason for this, that the Rambam takes so much time regarding and, and spends, I mean, so, so, so many pages explaining the prophecy of Moses. And he says Moses was this type of a prophet, and he receives prophecy of standing up, not like all the other prophets, and the other prophets were like this, and Moses was like this. What does he care so much about what Moses did? That's history already. But Rambam is not a history book. Maimonides is, is a practical law book. What practical importance is in the book of the law book of the Rambam? <clears throat> it says this is relevant to the if this is only relevant to after the coming of the Mashiach, so it says that Moses will raise up from the dead, and so we'll see this ourselves. What do we have to learn about this in the Rambam? The explanation is that the Rambam explains about Moses so much because all of the generations, even the generations before Moses will raise up in the dead, there's relevant the laws of prophecy, that God gives prophecy to people until the completion of this which will, <clears throat> to the highest levels like it was by Moses, and even more. In every generation, there is po it is relevant that there should be a prophet like Moses. And I don't think we're going to get to this, but the Rebbe says, and that's me. We'll see. Okamov, like it explains in the Rambam, that every prophet that stands after Moses is Einanu Maminim, but we don't believe in him because of any miracles that he does, but because there's a commandment in the Torah that Moses commanded to listen to the prophets. 
that all prophet, he can draw down the prophecy of Moses and his Torah. <clears throat> but in a revealed way, there's different levels, says the Rebbe. In our generation, who is the prophet? The prophet is the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Nasi Dorenu Mori Admo. And the Rebbe said a lot of times that I am just filling the place, his empty place. Let's do this last. Obafrat, and especially after that prophecy has returned to Israel, the, the, the previous Rebbe made a lot of amazing prophecies. Shehi Haktama the Mashiach, and this is a preparation for Mashiach, and prophecy that was by the Mashiach himself, that the, a great prophet that was near to Moses. Some people say that he's near to Moses like he's almost got to the level of Moses. Some people say that he's more than Moses. He was near to Moses. The rabbis say that the first redeemer, Moses, he'll be the last redeemer. That'll be Mashiach. And it says, yes, Mashiach will come from the tribe of David, but they'll, he'll have a spark of Moses inside of him. <clears throat> but called the Orbitor, in every generation, there's one person that is fitting to this. Therefore, we have to know that there is a law, even now, even before the Geula, the redemption, that there is Mitziut, the Gilu in Nebua, that there is now in our generation, the Rebbe is speaking to these, to all of his followers, this is in 1991, that there is right now, that by Mashiach, even before the redemption comes, and something like the beginning, like we say, the start, there is already <clears throat> a prophet that gives prophecy <clears throat> right now that something like the prophet that's going to stand up after the redemption, namely, this is not going to be a new thing that's going to be only after the Mashiach comes and he redeems everyone. No, but even now, that now we're beginning. There's the advisors. We follow even before <clears throat> the advisors come and says that the, that, that the advisor, the main advisor of Mashiach, says the Rebbe, that's the previous Rebbe. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe is already here. He gave the prophecy. And the prophecy is that Mashiach will come instantly if we just return to God. We'll see. Therefore, the Rambam writes in a book of law, <clears throat> in his law, that what? And especially the Rambam writes in his book, also the laws which are relevant to Mashiach as a preparation to this, the prepar that he says the prophecy will return. But to bring Mashiach, here's the laws of what Mashiach is, the criteria of Mashiach. And before Mashiach comes, there's going to be a prophet or prophecy that's going to return and tell everyone how to prepare for the Mashiach. And that's the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Incidentally, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe's name was Yosef. So we're, maybe we can say that's the Mashiach and Yosef. I, I, don't, I don't know. That's not what the Rebbe said. But maybe. Why not? But the Rebbe is saying that Mashiach is infinitely closer than what we can possibly imagine. And the advice, the attitude we're supposed to take is already given to us. And that we're going to discuss tomorrow more. <clears throat> right? The previous Rebbe, he's the Mashiach, and we'll talk about this, God willing, tomorrow. Very interesting, very amazing, very controversial. 